that came from Europe. Hey friends, welcome back to Summer Hill. I hope you are having a good day. Um, today, we are going back in time to, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago in a YouTube video I did on decorating with dough balls. After writing that blog post and um, doing the video, I started getting some questions about dough balls and I thought, hey, maybe this is what I need to write about. Maybe this is what I need to make a video about. So today we are going to talk about dough balls. We're gonna talk specifically about what is a dough ball, what they were used for and what they are used for today, um, the history of dough balls, and the best places to buy vintage dough balls, antique dough balls, and new dough balls. Also, um, at the end, I am sharing a video of a person who is pressure washing my kitchen rug. Um, he was here doing some other pressure washing, and I asked him if he had ever pressure washed a rug, and he said, yes, I have. Uh, he used to work for Sears and he used to pressure wash rugs for Sears. So I was super excited. So I thought you might like to see how someone used to pressure wash rugs for Sears long ago using my rug as an example. Um, so let's get started talking about dough balls and then we'll head outside and pressure wash a rug. Okay. So um, I'm going to turn on the light because I think it's kind of dark in here and it'll be really grainy if we don't do that. So I'm gonna set up right over here so I can show you this dough ball because um, there are two kinds, basically two types of dough balls and they are round ones and there are trencher ones which are long ones. And originally, a dough, what is a dough ball? A dough ball is, it could be wooden, it could be, um, like a crock material, it could be porcelain. I mean, today we have lots of dough ball options, but if you're looking for the answer to what is like the wooden dough ball, it was traditionally used to knead dough and then let the dough rise in the wooden bowl. They would cover it with a piece of fabric and the wood acted as such a nice insulator that the dough would rise beautifully inside. So some families had really big, big dough balls. And I'm gonna show you a big dough ball that um, my niece is letting me borrow for this video. So they would use big ones because they could need like a lot of dough in it because they couldn't just go to the grocery store and buy three or four loaves of bread. And let's say they had a big family and they needed a lot. So, so that's what a dough ball is. A dough ball is traditionally, if we're talking vintage, it's wood. Um, if somebody is talking in modern day, it could be uh, porcelain, it could be other materials, uh, metal, metal took place of wooden ones. This is a ceramic one here. So, um, so that'll give you an idea of what is a dough ball. So next we're going to talk about, well, and we also talked about what are they used for, but so now, you know, they're used to make bread of some sort. So the kneading in the dough ball, and then they would let it rise in the dough ball, and then they would cook it. But today, dough balls, old dough balls, new dough balls are used for other things. So here are some things that they are used for. I um, have seen other people do this, and that is that they have taken and converted a dough ball into a fruit ball. So um, this is a new dough ball that I purchased over a year ago at Target. And I believe they still have more on their website, but this is um, one example. And then if we go into, <laughs> if we go into my living room, I will show you some other examples of 
using dough balls as far as your decor. So over here is a trencher dough ball, and I just have this as a decoration display with some books and an old-fashioned oil um, ink, sorry, ink container, and then this little candle here. So that's one idea. And then another idea is people are decorating with them on their mantles. Um, people are putting them on the floor like this. Sometimes I've even seen them stack several that they've collected. And then they're also great for coffee table decorations. So this is my newest one that I just got. And um, it had a big chip in it, which I thought was really, really unique and pretty. So, so that's what people are using dough balls, old wooden vintage dough balls today. They're using them as decorations, um, but they're buying, but wood balls and wood dough balls are having a comeback. And a lot of people are buying them and making bread in them. Um, so definitely, if you're wanting to make some bread in a wooden dough bowl, you can uh, search it on YouTube and you will find other people that are using them. So here is another wooden bowl that I found at Goodwill, an, um, an old one. I stripped it down as much as I could. It had a really yucky layer on it. And then here's a crock dough bowl that will give you another idea that people use to do to do um, dough. So, okay, so we've answered that question. So next on the list was the history. And then the history of dough balls goes way back to ancient times. I have way more detail in my blog post than I'm gonna share with you here. But basically, let me put this down and get you guys a little higher so I don't have to bend down. <laughs> So basically, um, it goes way back to ancient history. I mean, way back. And, and it also has spanned different cultures. And I have all this in my blog post, but basically it had the same purpose that, it's, that people were using it 100 years ago. So, so that whole, I live in America, just so you know. So... So it started like, you know, amongst ancient people over in the European, over in, not in America. And then it gravitated over to America into the Appalachian region is what I'm reading. And people used wooden dough balls. So I'm going to grab this one real quick because this one came from Europe. So this dough ball is an old one that came from Europe. This one was not used in America. So this will give you an idea of how big it is. So a, a big family would have a big one and they would put, um, they would need dough, a lot of dough in here. And then that way they could almost mass produce bread. Um, another term, Another term for dough bowls is um, bread bread bowls. Uh, so if you ever hear somebody say, let me grab this. If you ever hear somebody say bread bowl, they're talking about a dough bowl. Now this is more of the size of um, that I would think of, like a regular size family would have. And the cool thing about this is dough bowls were commonly handed down generation to generation. In fact, one of my nieces that lives up in Maine, she has one that um, was her mother's and her mo and her grandmother's. So it's been passed down three generations now. And it's about this size. And that, I have a picture of that in the blog post. But, but traditionally, this was about the size of the dough bowls uh, in homes small, probably smaller families, but, but this is what I envision as the Appalachians were using. And they would make these themselves, like you have to have a pretty thick piece of wood. They would cut it at an angle here and here, and then they would chisel out the interior. They would just keep chiseling the interior until they got it all the way 
to where they wanted, and then they would smooth it out and sand it. And they would traditionally use um, maple, cherry, and I think ash, if I remember correctly. They would use those kinds of woods to do the to do the dobles. So, the next question is where do, if I if you wanted to find or shop for vintage antique dobles, where do you shop? So let's talk about online first. So online, I would look at Etsy. I would look at um, a website called Cherish, and it's spelled like chair, C-H-A-I-R-I-S-H. -I, um, I would look at, um, Elise Green has some now and then on her site. Um, sometimes you can, okay, so that's mostly online. So Etsy, Elise Green and Cherish, if I remember correctly. Now, where do I find most of mine? Oh, wait, one more, Pottery Barn. That actually came from Pottery Barn. Um, they get most of theirs from Europe, and then they sell them on their website, and they still sell them. I think my niece probably got that one 10 years ago. They still sell them. So. Okay, where do I, where have I found most of mine? Because I've not shopped online. Um, thrift stores, antique stores, um, Facebook Marketplace, Goodwill, uh, if you're in America, you know what Goodwill is. And um, that's about it. So this one, I found thrifting. How do I know it's old? That's gonna be your next question. If you look closely at this one, you can see the hand carved chisel marks. See them how it's very imperfect? That tells you it is handmade. It doesn't necessarily mean it's old, like really, 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 really old. This is definitely handmade. Another thing is look at the kind of wood. If it's like those woods I mentioned, maple, cherry, or ash, those are typically what they made them out of a long time ago. A lot of the newer ones are made with other things um, that people are selling at craft fairs and stuff like that. Those are new. But this one here is actually stamped, made in Mexico. And so I know it came from Mexico. I know it is hand carved, but I do not know if it's old. I do not know that. So, I liked it anyways because, to be truth be told, I love anything that is homemade, that is hand-created. Okay, so this one down here, I'm going to pick it up. I don't know much about it, but I have a feeling um, it's also handmade because you can tell, you can tell by the, the you can feel it. Like you can feel the the texture of a hand, like a carved material. Um, this if this is not a very high dough ball, so I'm not 100% sure this is a dough ball. I am possibly this is just a tray, a wooden tray that somebody made. Um, it's got a chip here, it's got a crack here, <laughs> so the wood is not holding up that great. Um, and it definitely had a like a coating on it, uh, but it looks like the coating's gone. But it kind of looked like a dough bowl, right? Uh, I thought it'd be pretty as a coffee table piece. So I decided I think it's a dough bowl, so I'm going to use it. So I put it down here, and um, I stuck some books in it. Oops, sorry, wrong way. I stuck some books in it for now because I didn't have a lot of time to style it because I just got it recently. And then I just put a plant on it. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. At the beginning of the video, I suggest, I said that I would share where are some great places to buy dough bowls today, like new ones. Um, I have, uh, Target was the one in my kitchen. So definitely Target. I would look at um, Kirkland's. If you're in America, look at Kirkland's. Um, I would also look at Hobby Lobby. Check those three places for new dough bowls. Oh, and don't forget about craft fairs or like markets, like vintage market days or 
This one came from a festival, like watermelon festival. Um, but I knew, see that knot? I knew it wasn't the right kind of material um, once I got home and started doing some research. I knew that wasn't a recommended to make dough in a kind of dough ball. In, in fact, it's not even, it's definitely for decoration. See, it's, it's very shallow very shallow, not the, not the perfect environment to um, knead dough. So, so you know that's not a real dough bill. But, okay, so let's head outside and we will work on that rug, pressure washing that rug. To begin, he just wet the rug and then he took and sprayed it with something called, or something like Simple Green. Um, he concentrated some spray on the more heavy soiled areas and then took this brush to kind of brush it in gently. He didn't scrub real hard. He just gently brushed it in. So as you can see, like on the corners, this is my kitchen rug. So it was definitely probably had some grease on the corners or maybe even some soil. So he did work a little bit harder on those areas. Now, I totally gave him permission to do whatever he thought because I said this rug was a Target rug. I paid 40 bucks for it. So if I need to replace it, I can easily do that. The next thing he did was I brought him some Dawn dishwashing liquid and he used it on those corners because it those corners were so bad. Actually, this one corner was really bad. So he put the Dawn on there to break up any grease that may have been in the soiled area, and then he scrubbed those down too. And again, I gave him permission just to give it his best because I could easily replace it. Now this was the fun part, um, and he started pressure washing it. I really wanted you to see this so you'd get an idea of how close he was um, using the pressure washer on it. But keep in mind, or, or let me reiterate, be don't go pressure wash your rug after watching this first one because I, I've not had experience with other rugs. And he also looked at the um, fibers in this rug and there was no wool in it. Uh, if the rug is cotton, or nylon or acrylic, you can you can pressure wash it. But if it has wool in it, your rug is going to shrink and you don't want that to happen. So I would not do this on wool. Um, in fact, I would Google any other fibers and just make sure. But, but you can really start to see as he's pressure washing, the blue tone was becoming brighter. Whereas before, you couldn't even really see the blue tone because it had gotten so dingy. Next, he had a little bit of soap in his pressure washer, and so he just washed it down with some soap. So after he pressure washed it, he just kind of looked at it and decided that he was going to work on those corners a little bit more um, and other areas that he noticed that weren't coming, the, the stains weren't coming off. So he just sprayed the simple green on there again and then started pressure washing that one more time. So at this point, he gave it a really good rinse, which is clean, clear water. Um, working in one continuous motion. Last, he grabbed his shop vac and he sucked out some of the water just to help it dry faster in the sun. One other thing, it was a nice, beautiful, sunny day. There were no clouds in the sky, which was the perfect day to pressure wash a rug outside. Next, he recommended that we drape the rug over something, so I grabbed two of my short little saw horses and we sat it on that. So let's go check on the rug, see if it's dry. It's been out here for about an hour. Oh, it's still wet, definitely still wet. 
maybe not quite an hour, but close. Okay, so it's been, I think I left the rug out there for probably about three hours and the very ends were still wet. So I took the rug and I draped it over my work table in the garage overnight. By the next morning, it was completely dry. So I brought it inside and I wanted to show you how it looks. I'm very, very happy. I really wish I had done a before video so you could see it. Now keep in mind, this is a distressed rug. So it automatically has a kind of vintagey look to it. But I, what impressed me the most was how dull these blue tones were until we cleaned it. And then now look at how the blues show in the rug. So much better. This corner was by far the worst corner and he got it. It actually looks much, much brighter in person than it does in this video, but he definitely got it cleaner because it was dark, really dark. I'm not sure what got on that corner, <laughs> but as you can see, this is already, um, it's like designed to look distressed. It's designed to look worn. See how these like worn spots here, here. So he didn't mess those up. That was already here. But I'm very happy with it. Um, for a kitchen rug, you know how kitchen rugs are. They just get really dirty. Next time I buy a rug in here, I'm going to get something like a ruggable that I can throw in the wash. Um, but this is a good solution for a kitchen rug. If you want a really pretty kitchen rug, um, you can pressure wash it. So that is, that's my handy tip for the day. <laughs> I'm going to do this on another rug, an old rug that was in my living room that's made of an acrylic material. Um, this one's more of a cotton, I believe. Let's look at that, if I can find it. Yeah, so what does this say? It's a polyester. So um, polyesters don't shrink. So that's that. it's a good candidate um, for this kind of project. <laughs> but anyways, I think it turned out great. So that's it for today. I hope you, we're inspired. I hope you got some ideas and I hope you learned something new about dough bowls. Um, and I am so glad you came to join me. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. And I'll see you all soon here at Summer Hill. Have a great day. Bye.